What's going on, Badger Nation? It's Mike and Steven here, and welcome to your weekly dose of all the Amazon advertising strategy and techniques you need to level up. Steven, how are you and that cute little dog in the background doing today? I actually, I physically moved my dog to reposition her to make sure she was in the frame. Uh, yes. Because I, I just, I feel like she's worth it, you know. Oh, look, now she's we wetting her tail. We pull out her. all the stops for this podcast. You know what, Joe Rogan? <laughs> He ain't got a he ain't got a dog on his show. No, you ever Boring, think about that? If you ask me, you ever think about that? That's right. Uh, Joe Rogan, I think his, I think he's the number one show. Yeah, I know he's like the guy. Uh, to be honest, I've never listened to him, so I probably should. Sounds interesting. Never, not once. Very different show. <laughs> Very different. He doesn't talk show about Amazon ours. PPC. Uh, our show, we try to give people an Amazon. PPC tip they can use immediately in their campaigns. His show gets Elon Musk to hit a joint. Sounds valuable. So very different show, very different show. Um, but by the end of this very episode that you are listening to, dear friend, uh, we're going to teach people how to use brand analytics new reports. This is part three of a four-part series digging into brand analytics, how to get you the most value out of these reports, how to think about them, how to use them. Uh, and this new report that we're going to talk about today is a source of a great new, sort of like a great new place where you can get keywords and some sort of business intelligence so that you can be sure that you convert at the very highest rate. So Steven, just like I mentioned, this is this is part three of four in our brand analytics tour. Uh, let's. I'm gonna test you. I'm gonna see how well you can do this. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Can you give me a five second summary of brand analytics? I'm gonna time you, ready, go. Analyze your brand. I don't know, dude. You said five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that's pretty perfect. You can analyze your brand. And now as we sort of give us a five second recap of Amazon search terms in brand analytics, give me that. See how well you rank for the most important search terms on Amazon. <sighs> yes. Brand analytics search term report. We've covered that uh, a bit a couple episodes ago. So if you haven't heard about brand analytics and how to use uh, the search terms portion of brand analytics, be sure to go back a few episodes and listen to that search term. Uh, really great way to know you know what's being searched and how often you're searching and what your rank is for and all these good things. Part two of our brand analytics uh, adventure, we talked about market basket analysis. Steven, can you give me a five second recap? We're gonna keep rolling with this. Um, how, uh, most frequently bundled items with your products. That's sick. You did it. I mean, that's basically <laughs> it. Um, and today we're going to be going on to part three, item comparison and alternate purchase behavior. And we should just give them a five uh, second recap of that and call it a day. Done. <laughs> that's kidding. right. Uh, so yeah, so there's some cool contrast between the previous two episodes talking about brand analytics search terms and market basket analysis there's kind of a cool contrast to those previous two to this episode Stephen. yeah so you know i always think it's helpful i mean when talking about e-commerce i think it's helpful to think about everything as if you were in a brick and mortar uh like an actual like shopping mall or whatever and, uh, and so I think that's just a, a good way to think about all of these analytics, whether it's like conversion rates, stuff like that. So if um, the previous episode, market basket analysis, that would be like you're walking down the aisle, you're seeing some, I don't know, you're seeing a salt shaker. And while you're at it, you also pick up the, park, the pepper shaker and you put them in your basket together. Uh, this episode is about item comparison and alternate purchase behavior meaning they did not purchase your product, but they purchased a different product. So it would be the equivalent of picking up two different salt shakers, uh, looking at them, looking at the prices, looking at uh, the quality of it, and maybe just even the labeling and the branding. And you know, maybe you want something that looks nice <laughs> in your kitchen. And uh, so you, you ultimately end up picking the other product, not or the yes. shopper ends up picking the other product, not yours. So this episode is about competing products, not complementary products. 
Yes, if any listener is ever, uh, I'm, ever I'm ever in their house, I'm going to go straight to the salt and pepper shakers <laughs> and judge the hell out of you. Let's Dude, check them Trader out. Joe's Himalayan pink salt. No other option. <laughs> Fire. Yes, we're both millennials, as you can tell. Let's jump into section one, defining what these actual item comparison and alternative purchase behavior reports are. Let's jump in to section one. All righty, Stephen. So just like all the other brand analytics reports, you're going to find this report, the item comparison and alternative purchase behavior. That's a mouthful. You're going to find this right inside brand analytics so inside seller central go to reports brand analytics on the left side once you are there you will see the place for item comparison and alternate purchase behavior so pretty straightforward so far but once you are there and you're actually looking at the icap as i like to abbreviate it once you're you actually made that looking, up just now <laughs> Oh man, if I have to say item comparison alternative alternative it, it is purchase mouthful, behavior. Yeah. The ICAP. Yes. So yeah, so when you go into the ICAP report, what are people actually gonna see when they open it up? Uh so the first thing they're gonna see is, you know, Amazon gives this definition for ICAP, as we have just on the fly named it. It says improve your competitive intelligence by gaining insight on products most frequently viewed together with yours in addition to customer's final choice after viewing your product. Uh, so we're gonna break all that down. Um, there's, a, there's a bit more to that than just meets the eye with the kind of surface definition. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what we're looking at here. That is essentially it. So it's split up into sort of two main areas. They have all of your item comparison up top in one table and then they have your alternative purchases down below. Um, so yeah, so you will open it up and this is only for your products and products that were compared to them. You cannot type in anyone's product here like you could type in any search term or any ASIN on the search term report part of brand analytics. So you can only see your products here. So what you will do is you basically see your products as well as a comparison product and then a percentage of how often it was compared. And Amazon defines this sort of percentage as simply the percentage of times this product was viewed by customers who also viewed your product within the same day. So mm -hmm. pretty straightforward there. And we actually get five ASINs now. Our previous reports, we only had like the top three. Now we get the top five which is pretty neat. So they gave us a little bit more information here when it comes to the amount of things that are compared. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I, I don't know why they only give you three of the of the top basins for the search terms, the market basket analysis, but then when it comes to item comparison and alternate purchase behavior, they give you five. So that's, I don't know, Amazon's always kind of has some inconsistencies from you know one tool or platform to another. So uh, yes. yeah. But another thing just to note there is um, looking at item comparison or alternate purchase, uh, you will probably pretty frequently see a lot of your own ASINs here. So if you have different variations, uh, you've got different sizes of the product or different colors, um, especially if those are on the same product listing and people can switch back and forth, you are going to get a lot of that data as people are like just switching back and forth to different variations, evaluating the, you know, the... Uh, yeah, if it's a color, they're seeing which one they like more. If it's a size, they're comparing like price per ounce or whatever. So uh, you're probably going to see as the number one most compared to a lot of the time will be uh, your own ASINs there. So just something to keep in mind. Yeah, if you sell the product and you sell variants, somebody already did the hard work to find your first variant. You know, it stands that they liked it enough to click on it. They might also click on a variant. So Nothing too groundbreaking there, uh, but just really simply, you know, I'm looking at one right now and I have my product, a comparison product, and then I see, you know, rows uh, where they're compared. So my first percentage is 17.04%. That means when they were looking at my first product, the second one was clicked on 17.04% of the time. Um, and there's some caveats here. We're not going to try to, you know, we're going to save all the strategy and how to interpret this data for later. But basically, that's what exactly what that means. When they were looking at that first product, they clicked on the other one 
uh, within 24 hours of viewing my product 17% of the time. So pretty straightforward there. That's the first part. That's the comparison products. The second part is alternate purchase. And very similar looking, you'll see your products and your ASINs in the first two columns. Then you will see the purchased compared products. So what people purchased instead of your product if they, you know, compared something else. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's basically it. And there's some interesting definitions that is very confusing that it, it pays for us to slow down a little bit here. The percent purchased, Amazon defines it as percentage of orders that contain the alternative product in comparison to the total number of alternative product orders. Meaning, uh, what this actually means is this is not how many people purchase that other product uh, instead of yours ever. It just means if they ended up purchasing something else, what the percentage of that was. For example, if you have 100 views of your product and then one person buys product B, product B in this list will say 100%, not 1%. So it, it means the percentage of time that somebody actually viewed an alternative product and then ended up purchasing that product, not out of your total product views so 100 views on your product and one person one time buys product b that product b will show up here and say 100 percent, not one percent hopefully that makes sense yeah it is i mean even when we were prepping for this episode i, I got a little confused there when we were talking but yeah i mean uh just to i guess recap that or put it in other words clarify please yeah i mean yes. uh basically um these numbers aren't showing you how often somebody went to another product. It's out of all the times that somebody went to a product, how often was it this product? And the reason why that is important um, is because the, the conversion rate, so there's conversion rates for products and then there's also conversion rates for industries, um, for niches. And so we were actually looking at one client account that has an average conversion rate of 1%. And that's not because their product is bad because we've talked like the average conversion rate on Amazon is about 9.8%. Um, it's not because they have a bad product. They have a great product. They're ranking really, really well on the best sellers rank list. Um, it's their it's their industry. It's They have expensive products. This particular product requires a monthly subscription. Um, so the, the type of traffic that they're getting is usually people who are more speculating and thinking about what they're going to get and maybe doing, you know, research um, and not necessarily so hot to buy. And so because their conversion rates are naturally super low, if there is an alternate purchase, um, it's probably going to be on another item that has a higher conversion rate. You know, there are other market or uh, other niches that have like, you know, they average 15, 20% conversion rate. So <laughs> for this product, um, let's just say it's an electronic device. Uh, sometimes the number one, most, the, the one that has the biggest alternate purchase percentage, uh, share is something that's not even in the same category. It'll be like a skin oil or, uh, what was the other one? Oh, like a U USB, um, thing, which is in a, just a completely different category than this particular electronic device. So, so it's people who just coincidentally happen to buy these other product, but it's not necessarily a competitor. So, that's just one thing to, to keep in mind with this data is it's not necessary. A lot of times it will be competitor products, but not always, um, especially depending on the actual number of views that your product is getting, which we will come back to in just a second here. Yes. Uh, so, so that's basically the report. That is the item comparison and alternative purchase behavior report. It's going to show you the percentage of times that somebody viewed another product within 24 hours of yours. Uh, that's the item comparison section. And then it's going to show you of people that ended up buying something else, which products got purchased at what percentage. Uh, just like I mentioned, if, if you have 100 views in your product and then one person buys that product B, it'll say 100% there. So it'll show you the percentage when somebody did buy a compared product, what the percentage of that purchased was. 
And with that, we are ready to talk about how to actually use this data so that you can go out there and improve your campaigns and overall Amazon marketing. A lot of this stuff does go into general Amazon marketing. And with that, let's jump to section two, the strategy. So what on earth do we do with this information? So, so far we've got compared items and we've got purchased items. Um, I have to say it. We, we could not have a complete episode unless we mentioned this first thing. Depending on your store and your brand and your product, depending on a couple things, this report might be completely useless to you. Meaning, if you don't have... Mm, so there was one account that we opened this up on. And out of like the 10 products, half of them were completely irrelevant. Uh, like, I think I saw one that was like, at like a healthy tea and then like hamburger meat came up and it's like, yeah. maybe I can stretch and say when somebody's buying a drink, maybe they want food. They want to consume something. Maybe, but like, it, would it be advisable for you to go out there and like start bidding on it? That might be pretty tough. You know, you're going to have to make that judgment call. But I think that something, you know, you may end up with irrelevant products. You know, you mentioned this a little bit earlier in the show where maybe it's in the same category and maybe it's not even close. Like you might get things like way far off. Um, so, yeah, you definitely it's it's it'll definitely take a little bit of like, you know, common sense and intuition here. Uh, it's not going to be straight up just export this list, grab those ASINs, create product targeting campaigns. Right. Um, it will take a little bit more work. And yeah, I mean, like, you know, at the, at the end of this episode, we're going to kind of have a final verdict. Like, is there even any value in this report? Um, I was even thinking just as we were prepping this, maybe this should just be like a badger bite, just like a five minute thing that just explains what it is and move on. Cause there's not a ton of value, but there is right. some value. The next points we'll back to. are pretty, like pretty good. Like I'm, I'm going to, do these things like I, I think the next few points are good but do know that you're gonna have to sift through some irrelevant points to the report uh this is not like a silver bullet um like all things th this is going to give you much better brand intelligence how people behave what they're comparing and we'll, we'll, we'll get into it in the future points but the first thing that i'll say is you may bump into some irrelevancy when you're analyzing a lot of these things the second part of why you will bump into some irrelevancy is you need a lot of volume in order to make this really a valuable report. For example, right. like I can't say how many item comparisons I looked at where the item comparison was like 33%. A lot of them were even 100%. Right. That that means, you know, if it, if it was, a, you know, 33%, that means... I had three views and then like one one of those three views, they clicked on something else. In, the, in that particular case, that was a very low volume one. That could also mean, you know, out of a thousand, you know, 333 were comparing something else. But I know in this case, the, the volume was so low, it, it wasn't that helpful. And you could take that one of two ways that like you need a lot of volume in order to make it really relevant. Or if you have a very low volume product, and you're trying to get it off the ground and you, you're ending up with these huge numbers, that could be like a really scary sign that like you have low volume and very high item comparisons, you're in trouble. So. Right. Yeah. Even on our initial phone call, Mike, you were seeing uh, this one product. It was an alternate purchase. Uh, it was either alt alternate comparison or alternate purchase. And you're like, yeah, this is like a 20 to 30%, uh, you know, conversion share, whatever. And I was like, I was like, open up that actual product listing from the client, and I bet you, the product listing there's a, there's a problem with it if it's if the it's a high and you looked it up and it was out it was of out stock. stock, and so so chances are it wasn't it wasn't even ranking on Amazon, so it wasn't getting a ton of views anyway. So yeah, it probably only got like three or five or ten views, right. and so um, so yeah, so three item comparisons out of nine views is going to give you like a thirty three percent thing. So uh, so yeah, so it it's gonna this tool is going to work best for your products that have for your bigger products the ones that get lots of traffic to them um new new items new launches chances are the data won't be as reliable but your your items that are well trafficked 
that's going to be where this is going to come right. in handy. Which sort of segues into our second point about how to get value out of this is if your item comparison is, uh, there's, there's almost like a sweet spot. And basically the item comparison sweet spot that we found that this data really becomes meaningful is when you have like item comparisons between two and 5%. Uh, because you figure at 5%, that means you've had at least 20 comparisons. Uh, you know, out of 20, you've had, you know, at least 20 opportunities for a comparison, basically. So if something's hanging out between 2 and and 5%, that's where the sort of the, the sweet spot is. Um, so when you look at these compared products, you look at them and you ask, why are people clicking on these other products in this sort of sweet spot range of three to five percent? Um, because I mean, if you have you know hundreds of views in your product and five percent of the time people are clicking on something else, that's going to be an issue. Uh, and you, you, you know, you might have a weak product offer, you are going to need to do something, and this is where you go and you look at that comparison, comparison product. And you ask yourself, why are people leaving me for this other product? You can look at the title, look at the product image. You can look at the ratings and the pricing. And if it's vastly different than yours, like you have to make some judgment calls here. Again, this isn't so cut and dry, but basically you get the data that people are comparing you to this other product and leaving quite a bit. What are you going to do with this information? It's like, that's where this, this comes in. Yeah. Hey, you just, you just had a little doggo walking. <laughs> <Yeah. in. laughs> oh, got two doggos. Uh, yeah, one second, real quick. A few moments later. My apologies. <laughs> what was this going to be for the region? Um, North Korea, North uh, South Korea's policy choice. Yeah, so if you are seeing uh, a competitor's product with less than a 1% um, alternative purchase share, you don't need to worry too much because that means out of all of the times that somebody viewed your product, ended up not buying it, and ended up buying a different product, that one happens less than 1% of the time. So um, yeah, again, so what we said earlier, like this is only out of all of the times somebody bought a different product and not yours what percentage of those times was a different product. Um, so if it's less than 1%, just from the examples we were looking at, we were checking out a few different accounts, a few different products. Most of the time, those other products weren't, I wouldn't even consider them threats. Uh, their product listing wasn't as strong. Um, people probably went with them just because they were on a budget and this one met the budget. And so they intentionally chose a weaker product. Um, but when you get into that, like Mike was saying, the sweet spot of like two to 5%, those are the ones you want to look at. If it's over five, if it's like 10%, um, it's probably just a low view uh, data because again, this is going from views to purchases. Uh, so, I mean, if you know the average click-through rate is less than a percent and the average conversion rate is 10%, then views to orders rate is going to be much, much, much lower. So um, if the views to order is over 10%, chances are the v number of views is pretty low, which is why the alternative purchase uh, con like percentage is high. Um, but yeah, between like two to 5%, that's where we started seeing kind of interesting data, like actual competition, um, actual competitors who had other listings. Uh, and so in that case, those are the ones that you do want to look at. And you want to ask, why are people going with these other items? Why are they purchasing those over mine? Uh, I think the most valuable thing is going to be to actually check out those product listings themselves and ask yourself, what are these people doing differently? Do they have, you know, are their images better? Do they have better lifestyle images? Um, how competitively priced are they? What does their copy look like? How many reviews do they have? Those are all the things you want to see to figure out how can I make my product offer better than theirs? Because for one reason or another, you know, people are comparing this to a competitor uh, again, you're at the salt shaker rack and you're picking up two different products. You're looking at them. And why does somebody choose one over the other? It's got to be something about either the price or the branding, uh, the labeling, the marketing, all that stuff. So those are the ones that you actually want to tune into. 
Uh, and again, this this strategy isn't uh, it's not a download a spreadsheet. You know, it's not like RPSB where it's just like apply these filters, plug it in. This is something that that is to raise flags for you that you can then go out and you know investigate and do further research. Exactly. Um, and that's really the goal of a lot of brand analytics reports. Uh, I also like to grab that ASIN, you know, finding something in that sweet spot of two to five percent, find that ASIN and punch it into the search term brand analytics report. Uh, see what it's ranking for. Play around there, like see if you can get new ideas for keywords. Uh, you know, what better source of keywords than, you know, a product that people are buying instead of your product. Uh, punch it into a reverse ASIN Look up tool, you know, poke around, see what you can learn about this and fill in any gaps that you may have uh, on that side. So not only do you want to do some sort of qualitative analysis, like what's the quality of the, you know, images and the title and the pricing and all these things like, you know, what are the traits of those things? But then also like that is where you can do a little bit more down in the weeds comparison where you punch it into a reverse ASIN tool, where you punch it into search term brand analytics, and that's where you can get some good uh, data on that. So the, the how to use and how to get value out of this, um, that's, that's that. Uh, I, I would say a very easy way that Amazon could give us even more value from this tool is if it actually told you the, the count of these things, meaning, you know, how, how often are people buying something alternative? Like, what is that actual number? It's almost like my anti-conversion rate. Like, you know, people saw my product, but they ended up buying something else. What is that percentage? I think that would be really valuable. Like how often does that actually happen? Because that, that way we'd be able to, you know, really prioritize our, our short list. Um, right. Yeah. Like how often does someone shop on Amazon, look at things and then not buy anything at all? Because I do that a lot. That'd be um, awesome. Just hop on Amazon, just get, get in some ideas. Yeah. Even earlier, uh, we were talking about Jim duffel bags and, you know, I was looking at some listings I didn't buy. So it'd be really, so, I mean, I clicked on probably a couple ads. Um, so, you know, those people are, are saying like, oh, I have a low conversion rate, but it's not necessarily because I bought something else. It's because I just was researching and getting ideas. I wasn't ready to buy yet. So yeah, that would be really interesting to see like, you know, yeah, your anti-conversion rate, not just, you know, uh, yes. Yeah. And with that said, let's wrap this episode up in section three, the takeaways. So the takeaways, uh, to me, this report, item comparison and purchase behavior definitely seems like some I cap. I cap. Yes, that's right. It, it seems like something to do once a month. Um, it seems like something if you have enough volume, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of views of your individual products do it once a month see if you can find any red or yellow flags of people you know in that in that range of competitors in that range of sort of two to five percent pay attention to those see what you can learn from there see if you can fill in any keyword gaps see if you can learn anything from their titles pricing images or ratings and this you know it's almost like we'll give you better brand intelligence of how to navigate these things. So is this report useful? I'm going to give it a thumbs up approved. Um, I'm going to say... But just one thumb just, up. <laughs> yeah. It seems like a once a month task to be sure in conjunction with all the other things that you're doing, this is another tool in your tool belt. It's almost like this, this, the, the screwdriver that, you, that only opens certain types of screws. It's not a Phillips head. It's not a flat head. It's... Some other like I, Allen wrench. I don't know any other names of screw heads, but it's like the thing that you will use occasionally, but you're not going to use it to on a, as your daily driver. So, I like this report. It's bet more data, better. Data. I'm always asking for more data. I'd love to see additional metrics, like I mentioned here. Um, Another thing to mention: once a month is exactly right, and here's why. Within brand analytics, I don't think we said this on a previous episode, but the date range that you are selecting is not customizable. Um, you can't say, hey, I want to see from like December 17th to February 1st. Uh, it, you either choose weekly, monthly, or quarterly, and it is closed time frame. So if, you, if you're looking at weekly, you can't look at the last seven days. You look at last week. 
So it's week to week to week as closed data points. Um, so yeah, month. So if you're if you're going weekly again, uh, this works best with items with lots of views. Otherwise, the data is going to seem a little off um, with like that low data confidence. So if you're looking at a weekly basis, it's not going to be as reliable as a monthly thing. And if you're looking at monthly data, like we were just looking at January, you know, if I were to check out January's data last week and then I was checking out this week and then next week, we're in the middle of February right now, the data is not going to change. So, uh, you know, if I'm looking at monthly data, January is set in place. I'm not going to see February's data until after month's end. And then in March, I can look back at, at February and see what's happening there. So, yeah, definitely a monthly task because you want to use monthly information and like you said, Mike, it's just an opportunity to evaluate your competition, um, see what they're doing, see what's going on. And basically, uh, it'll it'll fuel you with questions to ask. And, you know, potentially you set up some product targeting ads as a result of this and and say, hey, like I'm not targeting this ASIN, but uh, it's clearly a competitor. I missed it somehow, but I'm going to start targeting it. So you can do that. But other than that, I would say if you guys can think of any strategies to use here, we are all ears. Uh, we are learners just like you guys. So please let us know, uh, you know, dive into this tool, start using it, see what you find and, you know, let us know what you think. And with that, we will see you next time right here on the AMZ PBC Den podcast. Have a good one, everybody. Oh, oh, oh.